A recent leak surrounding Intel's upcoming flagship CPUs based on their Alder Lake architecture makes it seem like they're ready to bring the heat back to the CPU market, and I don't mean that in a bad way. Also, a rumor surrounding AMD's Zen 4 has some people concerned. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. There's been a lot of craziness happening in the PC hardware market lately. More specifically, due to the GPU shortages and crazy price hikes, this has frustrated a lot of people, no doubt. Now, I've done a few discussions surrounding this market recently, so what I wanted to do was just shift our focus away from there and focus on another segment which I believe is just as important and thankfully is doing much better than the GPU market, and that is the CPU market. Over the past year, we've seen AMD and Intel release a whole new generation of products. AMD's 5000 series was for the most part received very well, while Intel's 11th generation on the other hand was poorly received. Now I want to focus on Intel here because when it comes to the desktop DIY segment, they've been having quite the rough time. Their 10th generation CPUs at launch were poorly received, and it wasn't until late 2020 when AMD was having supply issues of their own and keeping up with the demands, and Intel had dropped prices for those parts where people found them at good value. Then when they announced Rocket Lake, practically everyone just dismissed the generation as pointless since the CPUs weren't even that much faster than the competition and they barely actually improved performance aside from synthetics over their previous gen and especially when it came to multi-core performance. The top SKU, the 11900K, looked abysmal because it had two less cores when compared to the 10900K, yet it was competing with the 5900X in pricing which made no sense to me. The general consensus became that you should either just get Intel's 10th gen parts which were on for some really great deals or buy AMD's 5000 series. And if you wanted Intel's latest, then their Alder Lake CPUs are what you really should be after. Alder Lake is going to be a unique architecture because aside from the typical advancements that come with a new design such as IPC, performance per watt changes, scheduler changes, etc. It's the hybrid core layout which is the most interesting here because it uses a big little core design. Similarly to what you've seen from mobile SOCs that have high performance and high efficiency cores. Alder Lake will have a similar layout for their desktop and mobile chip. I for one am very much looking forward to their 12th gen CPUs because I don't think there has ever been a series of processors which have a design quite like this. It'll be interesting to see how this design impacts real world applications from content creation apps to gaming. Now recently, at one Raichu, who's a known hardware leaker, posted some very intriguing info to Twitter which involved Cinebench R20 scores for the i9-12900K qualification sample. Here they mentioned this chip was water-cooled and managed to achieve some very impressive scores. For the single-threaded score, the chip attained a score of 810 points, which is just ridiculously fast, way faster than some highly overclocked Ryzen 5900Xs or 11900Ks, and the multi-core results are also very comparable to what you'd see on a 16-core 5950X. To put this more into perspective, video cards did take the result from Guru 3D's 11th gen review, and here you guys can see it just has chart-topping performance. My 5900X when tuned can reach close to around 650 points in the single core test for this particular benchmark, which would make this 12900K 25% faster in that regard. And when it comes to multi-core performance, it can get close to 9K, which would make this CPU about 29% faster. What's interesting to note is that this huge boost in performance primarily comes from their IPC gains. Lafrit David, who has posted some specifications in regards to boost figures for this chip, stated that the 12900K has a single core turbo at 5.3 GHz, which is the same as the 11900K, and that would imply a nearly 30% IPC gain, which is a lot, but you also have to remember that Intel barely had any IPC improvements since Skylake launched back in 2015, so I'd say this has been a long overdue upgrade. Nonetheless, this is quite a huge leap from their previous generation parts and would imply that Intel has made some much needed significant improvements on various aspects of computing and CPU strengths. When AMD launched Ryzen back in 2017, they had pretty much just overnight taken the multi-core performance crown away from Intel due to offering much higher core counts, and this is still the same today, where the highest that Intel has offered on a mainstream platform was just 10 cores, while AMD has offered up to 16 cores. Then with the 5000 series, AMD had taken Intel single core advantage really leaving Intel with nothing. Now finally with Alder Lake it seems like Intel has finally done something innovative here which will allow them to bring some very competitive performance to the market and quite possibly
possibly take their performance leadership crown back from AMD. And as a consumer, this is the best outcome you can possibly want. I just want to take a moment to address the fanboyish concerns I get from some people out there based on the comments I've seen on my past videos. When I talked harshly about Intel in the past and expressed my disappointment, it wasn't because I was hating on them, it was because as someone who cares about market competition, you don't ever want to see one company getting a huge advantage over the other because then it just leads to the other indulging in monopolistic practices or becoming complacent. As much as I love the 5000 series, AMD did flaunt their leadership with their price increases, and if they don't have competition for their next gen parts, well, you can expect even higher prices. Thing is, when there aren't decent alternatives, then the manufacturers can charge whatever price they want because they know people will have no other choice. This is why competition is so necessary because at the end of the day, consumers are going to be the biggest winners. Now circling back to the Alder Lake leaks, it does seem like the lineup is going to be very intriguing. The 12900K is going to have 8 high performance cores, plus 8 high efficiency cores, giving it a total of 16 cores. Now from what we know, it doesn't seem like the smaller cores will have hyper threading, giving the CPU a total of 24 threads instead of 32. Still, that will allow for a decent multi-core performance, and given that each of these high performance cores are quite powerful, it should make up for that difference. The 12700K will have a slight reduction in clocks compared to the 12900K, and instead of 8 high efficiency cores, it will have 4, giving it a total of 12 cores, totaling for 20 threads. Then the 12600K, which I have a feeling will be a very popular CPU from the lineup, will have 6 high performance cores with hyper threading, and 4 high efficiency cores cores totaling for 16 threads. With these kinds of configurations in each tier, the CPUs will definitely give AMD's current offerings a good run for their money, but we'll talk about AMD in just a moment. Keep in mind, this was just a qualification sample, and at the end of the day, it's just a tweet without a screenshot. Not to discredit the source or anything, but grains of salt is what I'm suggesting here until we get some more concrete info. Also, the other thing to keep in mind is that before you guys get all too excited, it's that this is just one single synthetic benchmark. The performance may not translate so well to actual real world performance. Remember, Rocket Lake looked pretty good in synthetic benchmarks as well, but when it came to real world applications, there wasn't a huge performance uplift. Not saying that this is going to be the case again, but different applications will show different results and they may not be so favorable. Also, since this is a brand new architecture with a unique core layout, there will most definitely be teething issues. Remember all the issues Zen 1 had? Well, we'll just have to see how Intel and Microsoft optimize the scheduler for the big little core design. How will the current and future games handle and distribute workload to take full advantage of the design? What about latency? Rocket Lake lost to Coffee Lake in some games because it suffers from high latency issues, and will that be present in Alder Lake? So there's certainly a lot of concerns I have surrounding Alder Lake. Don't get me wrong, I am excited for it, but I'd need to see it in action first before I can make a conclusive, you know, statement on how competitive it will be. Shifting our focus to AMD, there was a bit of concerning information that recently came out surrounding their next Zen 4 based desktop CPUs. Executable Fix on Twitter and Patrick Schur, who are both known hardware leakers, have stated that Zen 4 will only go up to 16 cores. Now I know some of you guys were expecting AMD to bump up the core counts since Zen 4 will be moving on to a smaller manufacturing node, which in this case would be TSMC's 5 nanometer, but it does seem like the core and thread counts for these Ryzen parts will be the same as what we've gotten since Ryzen 3. Now to me this really isn't that big of a deal because to be honest I personally feel like that for the average user core and threads have gotten to the point where it's definitely superseded their needs. I think the majority of PC gamers will still be fine with 6 cores and 12 threads if not 8 cores and 16 threads is plenty. However, just because Zen 4 Raphael is going to top out at 16 cores doesn't necessarily mean this is going to be looked at as market stagnation from AMD. I think that if AMD really wants to affirm their position in the market again versus Alder Lake, they can simply shift their core and thread count configurations a tier lower. Right now, the Ryzen 5 SKUs have 6 cores, Ryzen 7s have 8 cores, Ryzen 9s have 12 and 16 cores. What if AMD came out with a lineup where Ryzen 3s now have 6 cores, Ryzen 5s have 8 cores, Ryzen 7s have 12, and Ryzen 9s have 16, so you could have 6 cores for around $150, you could have 8 cores for $299, you could have 12 cores for, you know, $389, $399, somewhere in that ballpark, and that lineup would definitely look very attractive. 
If they're not going to bump up core counts, then a repositioning of the SKUs to lower segments might be the best way to remain dominant in the DIY space. This way they can even match or beat out Intel when it comes to multi-core performance in those same segments. As things are right now, an i5 Alder Lake CPU with 6 high performance cores and 4 high efficiency cores will easily beat out a 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 5. But if AMD were to make it so that Ryzen 5s now have 8 cores, they should still hold an advantage. We'll have to wait and see exactly what AMD does with Zen 4, it's quite a ways away from now. Now, and rumors are suggesting that it's slated for a Q4 2022 launch. In this case, there would still be quite a big gap since the launch of their Ryzen 5000 series, and to answer back to Intel's 12th gen Alder Lake CPUs, they'll probably do a refresh of their Zen 3 processors with a Zen 3 Plus, and I've heard that they'll be refreshing the lineup with the new 3D vCache technology which they showed off at Computex 2021, and it looks very promising. You often wonder what are some ways manufacturers can improve CPU performance from your typical enhancements we see every generation. I mean, we just discussed Intel's big little core design which is unique and is quite innovative, and with AMD, they have engineered the ability to literally stack chunks of large L3 cache to a single Zen 3 die CCD. This allowed them to increase bandwidth and triple the total amount of cache, and the results of this were quite profound. If you guys recall their presentation in Computex, they had demonstrated two 12-core Zen 3 CPUs, both locked to 4 GHz, one which was your typical 5900X, and the other one was utilizing their new 3D vCache technology, and this enabled them to achieve a nice 12% improvement in this particular title, and Gears 5 isn't even that CPU bound. And so just by stacking more memory the CC to the CCD, they were able to enhance performance this much, and that is quite astounding. If AMD refreshes their Zen 3 lineup with some clock speed bumps with this 3D vCache technology, then I think for the time being, it would be enough to be competitive against Intel's Alder Lake. Of course, pricing does play a huge part in that too. Now just imagine this technology being added to their Zen 4 CPUs. With changes and advancements AMD has made to the architecture, they've been able to bring stuff like double digit IPC gains to the table these past couple of generations. I have no doubt that they will achieve the same with Zen 4. And then once you also factor in the uplifts with this 3D vCache technology, then Zen 4 might turn out to be quite the monster. The CPU market is finally getting competitive again. This is the best situation we can have, where Intel and AMD are both playing this leapfrog game with each other, and with each generation trying to best their top products. More competition means more innovation, better prices, and like I said, at the end of the day, the consumers are the winners. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you subscribe. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.